next stage of the larger scale solar generator build. Now this one's going to be still based on 30 amps of power production which normally isn't something that's all that portable. Uh, I've decided to beef it up so that it's expandable and could handle 40 amps of power production. And then uh, we've got 3,000 uh, watts of AC output which could put our usage somewhere in the uh, oh you know 60 70 amp range somewhere 60 amp range uh, give or take a little bit on that so uh, what we're going to look at here is a uh, Stanley toolbox from Home Depot 68 bucks at the local Home Depot fortunately I live near one of the ones that will give the veteran discount to all veterans uh, some of them will only give the veteran discount to retired or disabled uh, there's also a import toolbox that fits the exact same specification has little rails on the top for 2x4 so you can put a, another board on there or use it for measuring or as a sawhorse and the package the way this is eventually going to end up is there is going to be a matching pair of these so that once everything's put together and they're parked next to each other side by side what we're going to have is, um, you know, it'll be a, a low tabletop service so that when there's a table saw mounted on top, probably this one, uh, when we have a table saw mounted on top of that, it's, it's not going to be like chest or waist high in a table saw. It'll be like a, a kind of a normal table height that won't be too high. And, of course, it'll be self-powered, so that's how you get, you know, uh, off-grid or quasi cordless table saw there would be a full power table saw for processing um, uh, flat lumber at a, a remote site but the other thing is I'm beefing this up for long-term usage at my off-grid cabin and whenever there's any ambiguity about the property ownership or need to move or anything like that you want to make it where as much of your investment as possible is something you can remove okay and the situation with um, you know survival groups and things there's a lot of people that are hesitant to invest heavily in uh, retreat infrastructure at somebody else's property well remember what John Wesley Rawls talks about no no rent no wages and, but you are expected to contribute while you are a participant at the point you no longer are a participant you you take your toys and go go down the road and when you invest in a solar generator or let's say a conventional generator like that one you, you have that option okay this is part of what you're bringing to the table if you know you you become the subject of an invitation to a retreat or or you're go, going in or you're going out and so there's a lot of wisdom involved with making your stuff semi portable even though you know, it's obviously not something you just throw in a trunk of a car or wear in a backpack. But the idea is, is you could evacuate if you want to. So, this this has wheels. Uh, it has a uh, expanding uh, handle here. Now, the batteries that, that we're using are not the type you can just turn upside down and, and use all the time sideways or upside down. But if you're loading it in a truck, it's not going to be a major issue. If it tilts one way or the other way, you just don't want to store this upright with the battery sideways. The components inside are what you probably saw in previous video with the 3000 watt inverter and of course a 12 volt. Uh, it's a combination cycle battery. It's kind of a, it's an RV marine battery which means it is made to be able to push starting amps which is what you need to get electric motors going. I've got a relatively short cable run between the battery and the inverter. Now here's where I've modified things and my experience of this stuff is coming into play. I'm using a Schneider Xantrex uh, C40 charge controller. Remember what I just said a, a minute, a couple minutes ago? I'm upgrading this so that it can handle expansion panels. Okay, I'm going to be using four 100 watt panels with this initially. But at a later date, I may stick those on something else, and I'm going to use this system with four 150-watt panels. I want to be able to handle the 40 amps out of that. 
The other thing is, of course, brand new panels tend to overproduce power because the amperage ratings are all based on 10, 15, 20 year old panels, depending on the, on the warranty you have with the, with the panels. I'm using 6 gauge cable here, which is again rated for the higher range of, the, uh, uh, of what this should be able to run. And with the Anderson power pull connectors, which will run between the, the cables that come off of the uh, solar array, which if you saw a previous video is on a roof of a cargo trailer right now, my mobile workshop trailer. And this kind of is to convert that whole system to a not as mobile system, basically where it could, you know, portable power, but for, you know, good power, good even flow of power at off-grid locations. And this could be used in a long term, not a problem with that. Once it's built heavy duty, I'm using good copper cable for all of this. Um, not everything here would be outdoor rated but don't forget it all goes in the box so when we close the box it's relatively weather resistant but we would kind of want this to be you know in some kind of a shed or shelter or kin shed or something like that uh, what I have is a 10 foot extension cable here that would simply reach from the charge controller and this allows me to rapidly set up and take down uh, that 10 foot extension cable is going to reach from the charge controller to the cable that comes off the array. I just have it wrapped up and kind of stored in here on the side. And, and that allows me to attach and detach the array to actually charge this thing relatively quickly. I'm not having to use any tools for that. You just open it up, pop the box open, uh, plug, plug cables in and you're good to go. Now, the semi-permanent installation, of course, is stuff that's bolted on here, but if it comes time to replace the battery, I don't want to be having the battery uh, lugs as the main contact point for everything. I really don't want to be redoing that stuff very often. So, the battery terminals have some stuff attached to them, but really not that much. I'm using the lugs on the back of the inverter as the main contact point for a lot of stuff, because I don't expect to replace the inverter very often. The other thing is, I want to kind of even out the electrical, the length of the electrical path between the primary battery, which is the one closest physically to the charge controller and the inverter, where not everything's going to fit in one of these boxes. The eventual unit is going to include more, uh, one more of these boxes, which just has batteries in it. Now, if I were to try and stack everything really close together, I run into a couple of problems. One, everything here is pretty heavy. We got lead, we got copper, we got steel, we got a lot of heavy components, and that even even if this box could hold all those additional items, my problem is weight. Then it's too heavy for me to be able to load and unload into a truck without risking damage. Let's say you know if we do put it out the back of a pickup truck or comes off the edge of a trailer or something like that. I, I don't want to overuse the capacity on this just because the room is there, fill it up. Uh, one of the reasons I picked this box is it's 68 bucks. I can't build a box for that cheap in, in that amount of time that I can go and make 60 bucks or 68 bucks. I, I can't, you know, I, I can't make one out of wood or metal and save that kind of money. It's better just to go out and buy these things ready made, mass produce. But when I want to daisy chain to another box, it's just going to have batteries in it. The size of the box gives me a lot of options on what batteries I put in there, whether I'm using 60, 8D, uh, or, or just more of these type of RV batteries, which is what I'm leaning toward. It gives me the option of kind of shopping deals on the deep cycle batteries. So what I did was I got this two gauge, this is, this is a jumper and charging cable, uh, custom made here in Portland, the battery shop people make these on site. And what's cool is they kind of make them free of charge as long as you buy all the components from them. So, you know, it's $8 a foot cable, about a $13, $14 connector, another couple bucks for the connectors on the other end with going a lug. And the idea is that the additional box will that just has batteries in it, I plug these two cables, and that's what connects all my batteries to each other. 
and 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 with a thicker heavier cable it should give me a more even electrical path for equalizing the charge that's in the batteries uh, because the charge controller stays on this one the other box will not be getting its own charge controller now in theory could I fit one in there of course I could the problem is it starts gaining weight and pretty much your charge controller stays with the panels uh, one reason I'm not going to attach a charge controller directly to the panels or the back of the panel array is they're they're not really weatherproof they're not waterproof they're not weatherproof uh, mounting this charge controller upright really wasn't going to work but another option I had been looking at was to mount it on the underside of the lid here the problem is any kind of screws or penetration on that lid means it puts me at risk of that lid no longer being waterproof so I put the charge controller down there I have air space around these components now the the inverter has its own cooling fan which benefits me with the whole thing it keeps this whole thing ventilated I gotta drill a couple of holes so the cables can get in and out and I'll show this thing in use later but this shows how we take our semi portable unit we make it a little bit more uh, small building temporary building temporary use friendly and transportable so that it could be let's say you know moved location to location or or evacuated on a you know bug out no but you know if you gotta move if you gotta change locations it's possible when you have things contained in little wheeled container uh, things like this and then for security purposes you can still chain them down that sort of a thing you got it's a judgment call of whether you want something like this kind of permanently mounted in a place it's going to make it that much more difficult to steal or you leave it on wheels and you make it easier to evacuate one of the ways that I've made it where this whole thing goes either way is I'm really not doing much to permanently modify this box I can lift that that whole panel out it's a hassle but I can lift out that wooden panel um, there's a little dead space below it because I had to put some spacers in to make it even with the little wheel wells and I kind of have to shove it around and shift it around to get the extension cords plugged into the inverter once they're plugged in that's it I just run the extension cords out through a little notch at the top and and uh, we're not unplugging and replugging stuff in there that that all goes to an extension cord that's on the outside so you know once this thing's set up and running we close it we leave it going for you know indefinitely really and uh, the only other thing I would maybe put on the outside of this is uh, to buy that little hundred dollar optional readout for the uh, for the charge controller so as you can see this is an expansion of the solar generator project um, you know whole power production management things actually less than this gasoline powered generator but of course uh, over time there is no fuel usage cost so the more it gets used the more money it saves which gets me to a little part B on this how can you get these things to pay for themselves at least a little bit once you've made the investment